And Chris, are you comfortable if I go ahead and get us started? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, good morning again, everyone. Um, this is Monica Olson from the State Board, Policy Associate for Accessibility. Welcome to our October edition of CTC Link Accessibility Open Forum. Thank you for being here with us today. Uh, as people enter the waiting room, we'll continue to let folks in um, and uh, move along that way. Before I hand it over to my colleagues, uh, Chris and Josh, there are a few housekeeping items that we like to make everyone aware of at each open forum. We do have a professional uh, live transcriber provider here with us today. So if you need to uh, look at live transcription captions during this meeting, please either hit the CC closed caption button on the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you don't see um, a button with the letter CC on it, you'll want to select the three dot ellipses at the far right um, on the bottom of your Zoom screen and select show transcript from, from that menu option. Um, we do record each open forum and post that recording with our slide deck and transcript after each meeting. Uh, we do have material that we come prepared to share with our colleges each month, but our hope is that this is also a collaborative back and forth conversation. So if at any point you have comments or questions or perhaps you don't understand something we're talking about and you need to ask for further clarification, you can put that question or comment directly in the chat. Uh, we'll do our best to monitor chat. You can raise your hand using the raise hand function or unmute yourself and make yourself known that way. And I believe that is it for now. So without further ado, Chris, I'll hand it over to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Christopher Soren, the Application Support Manager here at the State Board for Technical Colleges. Thanks for attending the session today. Uh, I help with support of accessibility within CTC Link, um, as well as I manage a fantastic team of engineers, uh, one of which is uh, Josh, and he's uh, joined us today. Hello. <laughs> so he'll be here to help answer questions, in addition to myself. So we'll go ahead and get rolling. So. Uh, same agenda as usual. So we're going to do some general updates. Uh, any updates in the last month we've had on some service requests that we have open with Oracle and then time for you to share. Feel free to ask questions in the chat or raise your hand and, and we'll let you go. All right, Monica. Thanks, Chris. Back to me. All right, y'all. Um, so Vicki Walton is here with us today. She, uh, They also attended September's open forum as well. Um, Vicki's first day with the State Board was last week on Wednesday, October 5th. Um, Vicki uh, reports to me and is, sits in our educational technology uh, department within the education division at the State Board. And Vicki's title is Web Accessibility Specialist and QA Tester. So within this role, Vicki is going to, as it pertains to CTC Link and these open forums, Vicki will be assisting uh, Chris's team in doing some accessibility conformance testing of uh, CTC Link pages, um, HCX Mobile, et cetera, and helping to document those issues and communicate those to the vendor. Uh, working directly with me, Vicki and I will also be um, identifying further uh, accessibility events and training opportunities for the agency as well as our system um, of colleges. So welcome again to Vicki. Um, and Vicki, if you want to just take one moment to say hello, you can go ahead and unmute yourself, but uh, we're happy to have you here. Yes. Oh, I'm totally pumped to be here too. I when I was at Columbia Basin College, I was part of the CTC Link Accessibility Forum as well. So, um, but I've missed a few meetings from then to here. So I'm just trying to catch up, but I'm pumped to be here and I'm uh, really grateful to be working with some awesome people and hope to do my part for accessibility with CTC Link. Thanks, Vicki. And Chris, do you, do you want to uh, 
take the next bullet point or do you want me to say something about that? I'm saying. <laughs> The uh, yeah, so Grant and I will be attending the the DSSC fall meeting and provide some safety ceiling updates, uh, similar to how, how we do today. <laughs> I'll let you all know what's going on. The uh, so we're also going through three different image updates as well as an HCX update right now. So we got four uh, big project updates going on at this moment, and I wanted to to point out. Um, so if you go to the accessibility page on the state board site, and here's the, the link is in the in the slides as well. If you if if you just scroll down just a little bit here, you'll see these sections here. So we have campus solutions, financials, human capital management. So we were going to human capital management, and then this accessibility supplemental document here. Uh, you'll notice. If you scroll through it, it, it lists out all the accessibility updates. We had enough information to share. Uh, Oracle likes to, they provide a, a bunch of accessibility updates and, and sometimes it's not always clear where it is or what was changed. So we work with them to, to try and figure it out um, and then provide that information to you here. So there's updates on the external candidate gateway showing screenshots of what it was before and after, as well as the navigation to get to the pages. So there were some changes to the uh, enter time page, the payable time page, and both employee self-service, manager self-service. The I don't want to scroll too quickly through these and give you some nausea from <laughs> all the scrolling. Uh, but if you if you go through this document, you'll see you'll see all the listed updates here. This uh, image we put in on Saturday. So all these updates are in production currently. Uh, if you go back to the, we're going to go back to the CDC link accessibility page. We'll go to the campus solutions section. There's both the campus solutions image 26 uh, supplemental document as well as the uh, high point uh, accessibility uh, document there. I'll start with the CS26 one. So coming in with CS26, got a nice little content section here. You can click to go to the section. Uh, so the autocomplete attributes uh, to page fields for fluid self-service uh, name ads here. Uh, so there were some added uh, autocomplete fields on that, on, on that, like on this contact details page where you can add your name, Let's scroll down. So there's also corrections on this add address. Um, there's some corrections on the ICER correction, ICER suspense page, uh, which is it was more staff facing, student facing there. There was also in the uh, self service, there were some grade adjustments and font updates. So there's detail details here. Yeah, they. This is Josh, um, SBCTC. Um, I helped create this document. So if I could just add to that, um, as far as the, the uh, grid adjustments, um, they added some uh, labels and titles to the um, table attributes um, in the new image. So just to add to that, everything else you've said has been spot on, Christopher. Yep, there's also been some thought adjustments on other self-service pages, like wherever a student does class search or browse catalog, um, they've adjusted the font on, on those items. So that way they're um, a little bit clearer and, and more bold in some areas that weren't bold before. They've also done some label fixes on these staff facing ICER pages where uh, they had groupings not very separated. Um, they were kind of bunched together and the styling was, was off. They've made adjustments and fixed those on several pages. And here's another area where they added an attribute or a title to the, to the table which would not be uh, seen visually, but it would be announced by the screen reader. And here's an, another page where they adjusted the visual um, look of the 
a table as well as added um, some field set legends, which is a, another uh, HTML structure thing that is uh, provides a better experience for screen reader users. And that's about it. Thanks, Josh. So the next bit here is the, um, if you were to check out the this, there's the general HCX 22.2 uh, upgrade overview. So this is the overview of all, like all the new features coming in, um, as well as the specific uh, so accessibility supplemental document, which is this document right here. So at the beginning here, we have, I'll try and zoom in here a little bit. So this is a full listing of all of the changes that have that have come in all the different point releases. Uh, one thing to note: the we're updating a few a few point releases with with HCX uh, in the earlier part of the year with all of the uh, deployment groups and the new schools coming on. We weren't able to keep the the usual pace we have with our updates. Um, all the updates got to have a push to the second half of the year with the deployment groups in the first half. So um, we're we're going to continue to update ACX. In fact, ACX came out with an update while we're in the middle of this update project, and so we'll be looking to start a new update project right after we get this update in. So we're just continuing on that. That kind of was an explanation for why it's it's been a little while since we've pushed out some ACX updates. Chris, this is Monica. I will just take a moment to remind everyone that um, when we're talking about HCX, we are talking about um, a series of web pages. So HCX is a is a product that's developed by High Point. That's the name of the vendor, and um, HCX High Point HCX Mobile is a series of of web pages, and then colleges can decide you know, what, what different types of tiles and um, activities they provide on their landing page. And um, it's also an app that uh, students could download and, and access on their phone. And it, it provides many, um, many of the different, you know, functions or tasks that a student would be, would be doing inside um, CTC Link, but in a, in a different uh, user interface. And the, um, the document that Chris is going over right now is intended to help us, you know, um, track and understand and communicate to you all of the accessibility updates that the vendor has provided to us in their release notes with the newer version that we're moving to later this month, which is um, version 22.2.2. I believe, and uh, and as a as a just a little reminder, a little over a year ago in December 2021, um, some members of Cato did some accessibility conformance testing of the HCX version we're currently running, and provided a written document of you know issues found and concerns and a video rec recording to the state board, which was then also communicated with the vendor. So now here we are pushing out, as Chris said, an, an update and we're behind on updates due to uh, deployment and go live. And we're in the process of doing that accessibility conformance testing, um, hopefully starting tomorrow. And so the document that you're looking at is to help kind of organize all that information in one place so people understand what changes are being made in this new release coming and also um, that and also to know that testing is going to be taking place in the near future. So thanks for letting me jump in and give context. This is Christopher again. That's that's all great context. Appreciate it, Monica. So yeah, if you scroll down, that's that full list. So there's also some information here. I don't know if you want to speak to this piece, Josh, here. Hi, this is Josh again. Yeah, sure. Um, so we, so like it was mentioned before, we submitted uh, uh, some bugs um, to uh, High Point uh, early, I think last year, and then they came back and said, "Well, you're not on any version close to the the most recent version." So uh, 
we kind of want you to be on a, a newer, ver more up-to-date version uh, before you submit these issues. But they actually still did take um, some of the some of the um, issues that were listed under advisement, and they were um, put into uh, the not the most recent release, but a couple of releases back. So there are in the um, uh, the version that will be uh, going into production shortly. And uh, some of those included missing labels, um, like for example, on this first issue here, on the schedule feature for students, they had included uh, new filters that had checkboxes um, to activate the filter and none of the checkboxes had labels on them. Um, so we submitted that as an issue and they turned it around um, right away. Um, as uh, one of the other issues that was brought up by Cato was uh, the semantics for the springboard tiles and the heading structure. It was using um, H2 heading tags on the labels for the tiles, um, which was a violation. And they uh, put that in, I think in 21. 22.1 or 21, one of the earlier versions, and, and we have that fix in the new uh, version that we'll be installing. Um, and let's see, the schedule calendar um, has also been refactored to be more access accessible. Uh, wherever they had a calendar feature or a schedule feature, um, they they made some enhancements to make it more keyword for, friendly, um, as well as uh, change the fonts to to make it a, a more visual, um, a better visual representation for uh, poor, low vision users. And I think yeah, if you go down a little bit further. Okay, so there is currently some high um, high priority issues or um, issue wherever there's a, a page that has um, like a list of items that you can select. Like if you were going to drop a class and you have a full schedule of classes and you wanted to uh, drop one of those classes, there, the main submit button on the page is at the top of the page and it is de deactivated until you make a selection or deactivate a checkbox. So uh, a, screen, a screen reader user would not know where to uh, submit the changes after they made the changes unless they were to navigate all the way back to the top of the DOM or activate the list to show that their, um, what buttons are active on the page, which is not um, acceptable. I mean, we uh, uh, so we submitted that to um, High Point, um, and they said it's on their radar, but they have not given us a, a, a answer yet. Um, I was hoping to have an answer by this this uh, meeting, but um, we expect to to the, them to reply to us shortly. They've they've been um, pretty responsive responsive in the past when we've submitted issues to them. So um, we're looking forward to seeing this one resolved as well. Um, I've given them a few suggestions on possible solutions, one being not to deactivate the button at all. Um, another one is to put it at the bottom of the, the tab order. Um, and, and we're just hoping that they you know, come through with one of those. Um, right now, the workaround is to know that the submit button is at the top of the page and once you uh, make a selection on the checkbox, whether it's deactivating something that's already selected or selecting a new um, checkbox, uh, then the submit button um, shows up at the at the top of the page. I think that's about it for that one. Yeah, thanks so much, Josh. Yeah, and that's all the documents there. And those are up on the State Board Accessibility site, or you can go check those out anytime. And we'll also be working on one for finance because later this month we'll be updating to finance 41 image.
So before I had move on to the next one, was there any questions on those updates so far? This is Monica, and I'll just take this uh, opportunity to remind folks that um, you, you know, as as you users of CTC Link at your colleges, or you know, working directly with students, staff, or faculty who use assistive technology, um, we also have documentation on the accessibility pages for the CTC Link Open Forum on how to submit tickets. Um, if you encounter um, issues or things that you think are accessibility related issues. So we, we welcome hearing from you that way as well. And I just am gonna probably plug that every, every meeting so people know there's a way for the state board to receive that feedback from colleges as well. Yes, we're very grateful to hear from you. If you're facing any challenges, we'd love to get it fixed. So the academic advisement report, PDF export. So the academic advisement report has two different versions. There's an HTML version, which just loads up in the page. And then there's also a downloadable PDF version. So we had submitted a, a, a service request with Oracle on that, asking them to, to fix the tagging in the PDF because it's, it's not tagged correctly. And so they... The, there was there was a duplicate CSS declaration declaration on the HTML page, uh, on the Academic Progress Fluid page, and they they corrected that they fixed that which which is good I mean it's it's something they needed to fix on the HTML page, um, but they they didn't end up making any updates to the PDF though so we said uh, that's not good enough <laughs> fix it so. Um, we uh, pushed back on that last week and I'm, I'm waiting to hear back for an update on them on that one. So we can get those uh, that downloadable version correct as well. But the the HTML version is is good and correct, so everyone can still access that information just on the page. It's just that that downloadable PDF version that we also want fixed. And I believe HCX is also. Oh, this is Josh SBCTC, and I believe HCX has also redesigned their uh, HTML version of the academic advisement report. They call it degree progress page. Um, but yeah, so if there's two different flavors of the um, HTML academic adv advisement, um, one being in uh, PeopleSoft, another in HighPoint or HCX. Josh, this is Monica. I'm just capturing some notes. And in HCX, it's called you said it's called something different. It's called the degree progress page rather than academic advisement report. Yes, yes. And I, and I actually think that it's in in PeopleSoft on the student homepage, it, it's not called the academic advisement report first to get to it. I think it's called like academic progress tile. And then once you click PDF version, it says um, academic advisement report within the, the, the PDF version. Um, so yeah, that might be a, a little bit confusing there. Um, and HCX doesn't even have a, a PDF version. Um, so it's it, from what we've been told that when you click the PDF button, it opens up the PDF in, a, in the browser first before you're able to actually download the file. And that does something to the tags, apparently. So we're, we're still um, wanting them to <laughs> find a solution or I guess not offer the PDF, I guess, if they're not going to make it accessible. Thank you. So that's the, the action from the last month. Lots of, Im, lots of image and HCX updates happening. New updates coming in. So feel free to uh, submit your forum ideas on our online 
submission form page. And these slides are, are posted up as well. That uh, CTC Link Accessibility web page that I was showing off earlier with all the supplemental accessibility updates for the image, the image overview documents or IOVDs, <laughs> like acronyms. Our uh, next forum is coming up in November. Same place, same time. Yep, so our next forum will be Tuesday, November 8th from 11 to noon, same Zoom link. Um, I'll work to send out reminders beforehand. Um, this is Monica speaking from the State Board. I believe our team has presented all the information we had prepared to share with you today. So are there any comments or questions from our participants in the room? or anything that you need further explanation on that didn't make sense. Okay, well, we look forward to meeting with you again in November um, and to provide further updates and information to you. And uh, we're hoping to move forward with our H6 accessibility testing um, very soon this week. So thank you. Thank you to Vicki for, for being here and joining our team. And thank you to Cato too for being a part of the conversation and the advocacy. Thank you to my colleagues, Chris and Josh for all of the hard work you do in testing and um, documenting and advocating with our vendors, it's much appreciated. It definitely is a holistic team effort. Very true. <laughs> Go team. All right. Well, I'm going to pause our recording or stop our recording now.